Several years ago when I first started teaching in executive education, primarily I did the areas that I knew about and that was on individual decision making and how individuals tend to have predictable biases and errors in how they make decisions. And afterwards, a clients or companies would come up and say, wow, that was very interesting, but how do we build systems around this so that not only people but the organization itself has processes in place such that we continually make good decisions? And I would pause and I'd say, that's a good question. We have some excellent operations faculty. You should talk with them. And at the same time, I was teaching quantitative decision making, uh, analytic tools, structured decision making. And I would help the companies find tools that they could use to make decisions. And they would ask, so how do we get our people to use these? And I would say, we have great management faculty that could help you with that. And it turns out that as we've studied this more, there are very few decisions in life that are purely qualitative, that there are usually some numbers involved, and there are very few decisions that are purely quantitative, there's some people aspect involved. So what we've done is put together a synthesis of the two to really show how most decisions are made and how complicated they can be, outlining the errors that one can make both on the qualitative or quantitative or a combination of the two, and then trying to anticipate the errors and do something about them ahead of time. In our perspective, Decision making involves data, analysis, but it also involves judgment and opinion. Uh, these combine together to make for the best decisions. So one of the things we do in, the, in, our, in our two days with the, with, the, with the class is to give them different types of situations and then they have to make decisions about what the right thing to do is. And of course the cases are pretty difficult, but they're extremely real life. They're all based on real life cases. And we ask them to not just sit back and listen to us, but to actively participate, to put themselves in the role uh, of the person having to make this tough call and to figure out what's the right thing to do and why. Then we ask them to reflect on how this is similar to what they experience in their companies and then we give them time to specifically plan what they'll do when they go back to their company to make sure the decisions are made right there. There's actually been a lot of research on how adults learn leadership and how they can apply to their organizations. And it turns out, this probably won't surprise you, that the lecture format is by far the least effective format that anyone can use to teach leadership in an organization. In contrast, the most effective ones are experiential and applied. So what you'll find is we give lots of opportunities for people to work together, to work at their tables, to not just passively think about something, but to actively work through a situation and try to decide what the right thing to do is. Secondly, application. We give time for people to talk with those at other companies, to compare and contrast what they're doing, and then to apply back the, the techniques that they're learning in this class so that when they go back to work on Monday, they can immediately apply what they've learned to make better decisions there.